Morning, Glory, and evening, Grace, America. It's Hugh Hewitt, the Arizona edition of the Hugh Hewitt Show. we got a lot of show coming up. Doug Ducey is going to join me later in the program. In the third hour, it's going to be the Texas hour. Greg Abbott, the next governor of Texas, will join me. We'll talk about Ebola down there. A justice of the Texas Supreme Court will join me as well, Don Willett. But I want to begin the show with one of my favorite desert state people. Wendy Rogers is going to be the next congresswoman for Arizona's 9th Congressional District. Her website is wendyrogers.org, and she is working so hard. Wendy Rogers, so good to see you again. It's my honor to be here. You know, we have been, you've been doing this for a while. You're the hardest working candidate I've ever met. Tell people about this race, who you're running against, and how it stacks up right now. This is a winnable seat, actually. We are sitting in Arizona's 9th Congressional District. Scottsdale, here in, in, you bet. In the studio. And uh, I'm a retired Air Force lieutenant colonel, one of the first women pilots in the Air Force. I'm a mom. I'm a grandmother. I'm a small business owner. This is uh, an R plus one district. We have 10,000 more Republicans than we do uh, any other Democrats or independents. The race now is very excitingly breaking our way. Uh, I will be replacing arguably one of the most liberal left-wing Democrats in Congress, Kirsten Cinema, who to my knowledge has never held a private sector job. Uh, she's been a career politician. It's likely our only chance to uh, remove her from Congress. You know, my colleague Guy Benson at townhall.com doesn't say likely, says without doubt the most liberal member of Congress. Without doubt, she is just off of the charts left wing. And so have you gotten to debate her? Uh, we haven't had that opportunity. Uh, we are focusing on voter outreach, actually. Uh, there are a number of Republicans who are registered but may not. Uh, turn out to vote unless we ask them for their vote. This race will be won on turnout, not yeah, persuasion. Yeah, but you work harder than anyone I know in I mean, I'm quite serious. In the middle of the desert summer, you are out knocking on doors, going from shopping mall to shopping center to home. Uh, and so turnout, your machine must be pretty good. We have a wonderful campaign organization. We've been up and running essentially for the last 18 months. And uh, our, our office is in Tempe, 3030 South Rural. Uh, it's a fundraising challenge, though, also, because we have to get our message out. We go up on TV Monday uh, with some very compelling contrast ads. And so I, I ask your listenership to keep me in their prayers, but also to donate. Honestly, now this is considered to be one of the top pickup opportunities for the Republican Party in the nation. I hope the NRCC, the National Republican Congressional Committee, is in and helping you. They are helping me. I was in Washington, D.C. two weeks ago, and uh, it is gratifying to see the traction uh, accumulate, and uh, this is a winnable seat. Michael Barone said this morning in the Washington Examiners, I flew over from California uh, to do a, a Phoenix Christian Clinic event tonight with Bill Bennett. Uh, Michael Brown said the wave is building and the House could reach its all time high since 1946 for Republicans. That would require you to win. No, that would that a requires absolutely. the audience to go to WendyRogers.org and help out because you really need some help. Well, Speaker Boehner believes so much in this race that he is coming out here uh, week after next. Uh, Leader McCarthy was here just this past week to help me. So this has national recognition now. We have so few military veterans in Congress, Hugh. Nineteen percent of Congress is comprised of military veterans. That's woefully inadequate to address issues like the Phoenix VA right here in our district. The border, the lack of border security we have in Arizona. In 1960, 80 percent of Congress was comprised. Isn't that remarkable? It's amazing. Yeah. Well, give people a little bit of your journey in the Air Force. I want the Air Force people out there to know how you served, where you served, what you flew, all that good stuff. Well, I'm a fifth generation career military veteran. I honor my father and my grandfathers as uh, the legacy of service that our our family has had uh, since dating since the world uh, Civil War. And my husband, Hal, and I both served 20 year military careers together. We now have two adult children two grandchildren. He was an electrical engineer. I was one of the first women pilots in the Air Force, but I started out as a clinical social worker of all things, so I have a healthcare clinician background. But when I flew, I flew out of uh, Southern California as a C-141 pilot right there in you San bet. Bernardino. You bet. I uh, was also a flight instructor at the Air Force Academy. I was an air officer commanding AOC at the Air Force Academy. We had our son there who became a Marine, uh, of whom we're very proud. He and turned out well. That, that's what the yes. fetching Mrs. Hewitt would say, because yes. she's a Marine or brat, so that's right. good. And Semper Fi to all you Marines. I love the Marines. And you might, are there a lot of military in your district? There Do they are, know the difference between you and your left-wing opponent? 
they need to know if they don't know uh, wendyrogers.org for all of you veterans fellow veterans out there uh, there are 45,000 veterans in the district wow and we use the VA Hal and I do and I was one of the first people in the country to call for the resignation of the director and uh, and for Eric Shinseki to uh, step down this is a situation where we do not leave people on the battlefield we shall not leave them uh, sick and dying, waiting for care at the Phoenix VA. It's abominable. And our congresswoman has done virtually nothing to lead as a congresswoman. Did she vote for Obamacare? She wrote Obamacare. Okay. <laughs> good, she, good, good. She has been his cheerleader yeah. for Obamacare in this country. I, I get a, kind of worked up over this. Well, it, it's good, too, because people need to hear the passion in order to get the passion. And, and, and I know about you and how you have uh, diligently pursued the high road. But she is a left winger. This isn't about personality. Oh. She's just off the charts. She's to the left of Nancy Pelosi. Un, undeniably, a, a leopard does not change her spots. Yeah. And no matter how she might vote on this or that vote to to look as though she's reaching across the aisle to look as though she's voting uh, to get along, to go along with Republicans. There is no denying uh, the core convictions of this woman. How does she attack you? I mean, I, I, I know that the last trick in the bag for Democrats across the country who are frightened right now, they, they attack Tom Cotton for being insufficiently anti-Ebola. So what are they attacking Wendy Rogers for? She won't acknowledge me. Ah, even though you're creeping scared. up there and she's you're... She's scared of me. Yeah. Absolutely. How... It's going to take a woman to beat a woman. Yeah. She can't play the gender card with me because it doesn't wash. Yeah. She'll talk about education. I am a licensed teacher. I home taught my children. Then they went through the charter school Tempe Prep, which you're on the You bet the Great Hearts Great Academy, Hearts Board, you betcha. And it sprang from Tempe Prep. She talks about the military when it's convenient. She's never been a friend of veterans. Did she never vote to cut the pensions of the career military active duty? I am not sure on that. I, I think she to... did. I don't think one Democrat voted against that budget. So wow. uh, that would have been that. Now, I, I'm curious as to closing arguments that you want people to hear, because we, we got, you know, two minutes. What does Wendy Rogers want people to know there most? Are, there are tough problems here for our country. We need leadership. We need someone who has met and continues to meet a payroll. We need someone who has raised children, who has grandchildren, who understands kitchen table economics, who can balance a budget, who can unflinchingly lead in a very, very troubled time. That is who I am. That's what I bring to the table. I just turned 60 years old. I am not going to Congress for a career. I've had two careers. I want to bring those talents and that conviction and that passion to the United States Congress. And in terms of accountability, uh, you know, President Obama is just getting away. The IRS, the VA, uh, the Secret Service, now the CDC is not exactly inspiring confidence. They, they need oversight. I mean, are you ready to go in there and, and hammer them from the podium? You know me. Yeah, I know. It was kind of a softball I will, question. I, <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador Bolton just uh, helped me, endorsed me, called me last week. He said, Wendy, everybody's talking about winning Senate seats. We need to multiply, be force multipliers in the House. We need more national security conscious uh, people like you to go to the House of Representatives to be what you're calling this oversight, this check and balance. You know, I just saw Ambassador Bolton this weekend. He was telling me he had been very selective in who he pushed forward. And he, he did some funding, he did some endorsement, but very selective. They had to be right on national defense. Absolutely. And Congressman Trent Franks is another hero uh, for us uh, on the national defense front. He was an early supporter of mine. And on the family values, Mike Huckabee supported me early. And, of course, John Kyle. And I'm sure Arizona Right to Life. I'm sure that... Uh, Absolutely. You know, a national Right to Life. Yeah. So they're all on board. And, and it, it's an exciting time. At 32 days, are you tired yet? I'm invigorated. Yeah. <laughs> I can hardly sleep at night. Well, do you get up in the morning and start walking? You are like the most famous walker in all of Scottsdale and Tempe and all the rest of the... What cities are in your district so people know if they're listening? Uh, parts of Phoenix, Feed, uh, Arcadia, Biltmore, Sunny Slope, South Scottsdale, all of Tempe, about a third of Mesa... Uh, about a fourth of Chandler and all of Ahwatukee, which is uh, Phoenix. And it's an R1 district, and it could be a 100-vote district. It's got to get everybody going out. Any last word, Wendy Rogers? We have 10,000 more Republicans in this district than we have Democrats. This is winnable. Every Republican needs to turn out, but your national listening audience needs to support me. 
I, I pray for your help, but I also ask you now for donations, wendyrogers.org. I'll remind people of that throughout the rest of the program, wendyrogers.org. Go read about her Congress, Arizona 9th Congressional District. If we get this, if we get this, when we, we get will, it. when we get this, well, I love, I love talking to you, Wendy. When we get this, the Republicans are going to have a high water mark since 1946. Go get them, Wendy Rogers. I'll be right back. Thank you, Colonel. I'll be right back, America. Stay tuned. It's the Hugh Hewitt Show.